of early promise. We haven't seen too much from our British riders Miller, Elliott and Yates over the past couple of days. Yates, in fact, provided our one moment of glory so far, winning the individual time trial a week last Friday, and he very nearly followed that up with another stage win a couple of days later. He's talking now to Paul Showin, looking back on that individual time trial. This is just coming out of the start here. I'm just winding down after having warmed up for about, about an hour, 20 miles warming up. And I'm two minute man, the man started two minutes in front of me, just left. What, down, goes, what goes through your mind, Sean, when you just get into, when you get into the, uh, the starting round like this? When I get into the starting round, I'm just thinking about the pain that's lying in front of me and trying to psych myself up, you know, ready to know that I've got to go from, go from the start if I'm going to do anything. So I'm just preparing myself for, you know, bulk. <laughs> bulk pain. <laughs> bulk but, um, pain. I remember just before the start, you said to me that the only thing you really wanted to do in this time trial was to beat Lawrence and... Yeah, that was like in my in my mind. I felt like I wanted to beat Lawrence because a bit of rivalry between us, as we used to be in the same team. And last year he did a good ride in the first time trial, and I was about 60th. So this time I was trying to reverse the roles. I thought. In the time trials, you uh, you always try and beat Piper. But I was talking to your mechanic, and he was telling me that uh, you've been to see him half a dozen times to make sure he put the right gears on. Were you worried about the choice of gears? Well, I wanted to, I wanted to, you know, to change, change the uh, chain ring, and sometimes our uh, mechanics were a bit suspect, so I was just checking they had uh, done the job, you know, because sometimes you tend to do something, they, you get on the bike and you realise they haven't touched it. You look quite happy here, what you? Yeah, I don't know, you must have said something like you might win today, and I thought, no way, Jose, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in this last sort of 30 seconds, <laughs> yeah. just now, do you, uh, do you shut everything out? It's difficult to say what, what I was thinking. I just just prepare myself for the effort, basically. I can't remember exactly. Just deep breathing and just try and generally start myself up. We're just about to go now, I think, Sean. We're getting one second. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Phil, look at myself. Followed you when you were doing your first uh, 10, 15 kilometres. Yeah. You, you, you did about 40, 45 miles an hour. Did you realise? Uh, well, you know, with that, with a, we had a tailwind that was assisting me, and I was, and I was getting that gear over well. So I thought, um, you know, I must be doing, I must be doing around about that type of speed. Um, did, did you know the route at all? I, I didn't know. I knew roughly, but I didn't know the actual roads until I actually uh, started riding on. When the, you know, I was going along, I was having recognised them from days gone by when I was living with you. In 85, many years ago. Don't <laughs> we'll give all our secrets away. Um, so what kind of gears did you use just for the specialists? I was using 54, 12 and 13 most of the time. You mean a 54 tooth chain ring? Yeah, and you know, 12 at the back, which is quite big. I was just keeping, keeping the gear rolling, not letting it get on top of me. Changing backs and forth the whole time. I yeah, I'm getting you... that gear over here, you can see. Yeah, can, you can see you're in the 12 and 13 there. Yeah. I noticed that uh, you're sitting on the front of the saddle quite a lot. Yeah. That's because when you when you're really shifting, it's it's more like pedalling, not not so much forcing. If I started going for drag here, I'd probably shift back on that saddle a bit. Or if I went into a headwind, I'd shift back on that saddle. So I'd, need, I'd be pushing more, not pedalling. I've got that wind you know, behind me. I'm, I can really get that gear going. When did you when did you realise that you were going well? Did you know by now that you were going well? As I said, I felt as though I was going pretty rapid, and then my director sporty came up to me and said I'd. 40 seconds advantage on Fignon, who started off three minutes behind me, I think. Three or four minutes behind me. Yeah. And that rose to a minute, so I thought I must be on quite a good ride. I never realised you know, what it was, the final outcome would be. Noticed uh, you were taking a lot of risks in the corners, as if you, you knew what the corners were going to be out. Do you know when you go into a corner what it's going to be like coming out um, to the other side? Basically, I always look at the motorcyclist in front, the police out rider who's in front of me. And I, when I look at him closely, I can see how far he has to lean over going into that corner so I can gauge the severity of the corner on, on his angle of lean, like 90% of the time. And I was, you know, I was going quite fast. But when you're really going well, you tend to take the corner much better than when you're not going well. But when you got into the, uh, into the area where you used to live, do you think the crowd there, the people that you might have known, do you think a lot of, there were a lot of English people out? Do you think that there helped? There were hundreds of English people out from the start to the finish, and that really, that really uh, motivated me. They were really screaming at me, trying to get me going. And that, you know, that was an additional help. 
you rode for 31 miles absolutely on the rivet. There's a mile to go and you came into the last corner. How did you feel? Well, I thought, you know, I've given it everything up until this point, so, I've, you know, I've just got to give it that little extra to get to the finishing line. You know, it's like now or never, and you know, I just gave it my, my all. Well, then, uh, once, once you crossed the line, you had that inevitable wait because you yeah. started in the early riders. You had five hours or so to wait before the, uh, before the winner was announced. How did you feel then? Oh, I was, time went pretty quickly, you know, just watching, uh, watching other riders come in on, on the TV monitor. I quite enjoyed it, actually. You presented with the trophy. How did you feel then? What was going through your mind when you stood up there in front of all those people and you'd realised that you'd won a time trial stage in the Tour de France? I was, I was happy to see all the um, English supporters there. That was, that's what made it worthwhile. Otherwise, I I'm not really into that sort of stuff. You know, playing around, doing TV and that, a lot with you, you know. <laughs> it's one of the penalties you play, they're winning, isn't it, I suppose? But, I mean, winning the time trial for you, you were, you were such a good time trialist in England. It must, be, it must mean a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Like I said to a couple of the um, English supporters there in the morning, the night before, I said I'm supposed to be a tester, so, you know, I've got to get my finger out, I think, <laughs> just to show my worth. So what's it like when you get up there and you get the chance to kiss all the beautiful girls? Uh, well, there weren't many, too be there weren't many beautiful girls, actually, to tell the truth. <laughs> Bit old for me. <laughs> <laughs> Bit fussy, Sean Yates, isn't he?